Alrighty, good morning. It's October 17, around 9 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to pull that rope, the road, they call it, for the anchor. That's going to drag me into the wind a little bit, but it shouldn't be too strong. The wind's pretty light right now. It's really coming out of the south, which is kind of a bother. I'd rather have it coming from the west, but whatever. Expecting to end up on a uh, port tack. So I've got the starboard sheet already started out, so if I can get the bow spinning around, that's what I'll do. It's very possible that a boat kind of falls off the other way and I'll just have to jive. But I've got clear sailing behind me. The current's going that way. The wind's going that way. And I'm going to start the engine in just a moment. The mainsail is ready to hoist. It's just a matter of grabbing the halyard and pulling like hell. And it should be set. I think I'm set for one reef, but I'll shake that out as I pull the sail. But one reef is fine. It's not going to make that big of a difference, I don't think. So, we'll just see. Okay, so now let's start the engine. Just have it on idle, although I don't expect to use it. And let's get the show on the road. One thing you may notice is that it doesn't look like I'm pulling too hard, and I'm really not. For one thing, that's how a lot of old guys get hurt on boats. They get hernias and pull muscles, doing stuff like that. But really it's not necessary. Even though the boat's 11 tons, you just put a little bit of lean into it and the boat begins moving, and then if you're patient, you let the boat advance toward the anchor, then you pull it up while it's slack. And that's what you see me doing here. whether you're pulling the rope portion of the road or the chain. So I pull the chain when it's easy and sometimes when you get to the point where the anchor is really stuck in the mud you might have to use a windlass and just crank the chain up slowly. And again, it's not a big deal. I'll crank it some and when the boat gets moving then I can pull up my hand and I can toggle between the two fairly quickly. This is the mud. Thank you, St. John's River. But I can't dally because I gotta go steer the boat. We're actually moving now. We're inching forward. I'll clean the rest a little bit later. So the anchor's up and tied off. I don't think we need the engine. Let's shut it down. As soon as I get myself composed and a little tidied up, I'll get the main up and then we'll start moving. But anchors away, underway. Okay. <clears throat> First, I think I have the wide angle turned off now, finally. <laughs> it took a while to figure out how to do that and to take the time. Oh, so I'm kind of covered with mud. You know, it's on my feet too. It's all over the sail bag, so it's kind of sucky to have that, but it's all right. The muddy river bottom is what gave me such good holding ground. And I'd estimate I'm making about two to three knots through the water, but right at the moment, I've got the head sail backed against itself. That's an anticipation of jiving as soon as I clear these sailboats. So I've got a boat over here. I want to get past him. I got to get clear of these two guys. Then I know I can kind of safely turn to the north, which is where I want to go. I want to go that way, but I can't run through this guy, of course. So it's all good. We're going to sail about quarter mile on this heading and then we're gonna hang a left and jibe and the main will come over to the you know be in a port tack the rest of the way as long as the wind holds the wind the wind is supposed to be from the south and west today two days ago it was supposed to be from the east so really there ain't no telling what I'm gonna get for wind but I'm just hopeful I don't have to motor 
And now I've got Green Cove Springs in my wake. Not exactly going at meteoric speeds, but it's alright. Got all day to get 20 miles, so it shouldn't be too hard. And I'm going with the current, so that's going to help as well. Last time I was going against the current to come up here the whole way. Ended up having a motor just because I couldn't sail quickly enough. Moment of calm here. I want you to see the carnage. <laughs> that's just river mud. Nasty, nasty stuff. It's like somebody added adhesive to the mud to make it especially gooey. But I'm not going to clean up yet because the anchor is going down in a few hours. And when it goes down, then, then I'll clean up. Real quick here, I'm going to wash the mud off my body. Okay, so where are we? Still in the St. John's River, it's still sitting in the cockpit. Uh, the sun's, it's around almost noonish. Got about an hour to go. Got a power boat passing the stern. He's no real threat. That's the direction west, which is where my wind is coming from right now, so that's good. The wind was astern quite a ways for most of the trip. And that made it difficult to sail because I really can only get one sail out without using my whisker pole. And my whisker pole is kind of broken, so that's one of my repairs I still have to do. Yeah, so I've got, uh, I don't have a functioning whisker pole. I mean, it, I think I could work, use it if I had to. I'm really not well practiced with using a whisker pole. I need a probably spend some time while I'm anchored here this coming week just kind of playing with it and practice putting it up and down, up and down, up and down. That would be smart if I was smart. <clears throat> um, but for the moment we're approaching the I-295 bridge and I'm not nervous. I feel pretty good actually. I haven't been keyed up at all this trip. That's pretty, there's an opening in the center there and that's where I'm aiming and it looks like if the wind holds I can sail right through there. Although it's my intention to, excuse me, it's my intention to uh, start the engine probably. And maybe even put it in gear just for the purposes of getting through the bridge. Because you just never know. I mean, at the last second, the wind could die, the currents can get squirrely. It looks like the currents ought to go ripping right through. And I'm still with the current. We're, we're making pretty good time. <sighs> so we'll just see. I'll make that decision in about... Half an hour, because I'm, it's about a little over a mile away, so we're almost, almost there. We're not going very fast, about three knots is all. I turned on the motor just because the winds are so fickle, and I thought it'd be a good practice to have the engine running uh, before I pass under the bridge. It's good for the engine anyway, it's good for the boat, because I need to charge batteries a little bit anyhow and the engine hasn't run for several days so there's a lot of reasons why I'm doing this. But one of them is it's not crashed. This is the I-295 bridge so if you're not an American it's uh, the interstate highway system from, which was essentially built by President Eisenhower many many years ago. This is the Buckman Bridge and the first bridge we get to is the eastbound lane and then that's the westbound lane after that. So this, um, as I go through these bridges and I've got four more to go when I get to downtown Jacksonville, it occurs to me that I may never pass this way again. Uh, for all of us in life, that's um, it's often true that we never have a chance to see something again. So it gives me a little kick in the ass to appreciate the moments and to reach out and try to keep doing more. So I'm, I'm eager to keep this boat moving and um, head north so that I can head south. So you see me passing under the bridge and uh, as soon as I cleared it I turned to a new heading to the further to the east and you can see I jibed over uh, to a starboard tack and the head sail is now completely blocked by the wind so it's flopping so I begin to furl it up. And I sailed the rest of the way um, with the uh, main sail only.
This is about the only time on the entire trip that I even use the chart plotter. And it's because on the chart plotter I put a couple markers on it to indicate the spots that I wanted to anchor. And I was steering right for it. So now I'm steering into the wind and I'm going to steer even further into the wind until I get the mainsail to start muffing. And once I get the mainsail flopping and not producing power, that means I'm pretty much drifting and it's time to go put the anchor down. So I'm happy that I sailed the entire way, but from I about this point until right around there, I turned on the motor, and uh, that was because I was going through the bridge and the wind was getting very light and fickle for at just at that moment, and I thought, hey, let's just power through. So I turned on the motor, rammed through the bridge, then hung a right, and I kind of did a full speed run for about five minutes on the engine to blast over here, and somewhere in here I shut off the engine and sailed the rest of the way in. Yeah, so all in all, pretty good day. Now all we gotta do is um, hope that the batteries charge up as always and hope that the anchor sets as always and uh, then have that anchor beer. First I'm gonna go clean the forecastle, or well, yeah, the forecastle, uh, up the bow area around the anchor chain and clean up all that mud because this can be nasty. Because <laughs> I'm embarrassed by it. <laughs> okay, done. Done! Are you kidding me? You get this goddamn ship squared away! This is the main sheet. All boats and maids report to the forecastle. All boats and maids report to the forecastle. Why? What a freaking shit mess. Okay, that's my reefing line. That needs to be tidied up. And this is the <laughs> the wreckage from all that darn river mud. Oh my god. That's gonna need about 20 buckets of water. And this is part of that big ass system that's blown across the U.S. This is like the bottom edge of it. This should blow through, maybe get a shower, maybe not. And then starting tonight and tomorrow, the winds kick around to come out of the north this way. And uh, that's why I'm in this location, to hide. This land will provide me a little bit of protection. Certainly it'd be a much shorter fetch. A fetch, you say? What is a fetch? Well. Fetch is a game that people play with their dog, but also it's the distance that the waves have to build up. So if the wind was coming from that direction, then there's a, or even that one, that's a, if the winds are out of the west as they are right now, that's a long fetch. So if the wind picks up in speed and enthusiasm, this is going to be a very rough ride for me. But I'm anticipating the wind coming out of the north in another day, and it'll last for about two days. And so this is a very short fetch. Only a few hundred feet, about five. I anchored about 500 feet out from the land there, and so it's a shorter fetch, as they call it, which is what you want because I'll have a I'll still get most of the wind. That'll the, the land will attenuate the wind to some degree, but it's mostly the waves. You're trying to get a flatter ride, it's and so the boat is going to will spin around and do a 180 and be pointing this way and then uh, pointing this way and then. Uh, at least I should get a more comfortable ride because I was getting pounded down there in Green Cove Springs in that north wind. Whew, had a long fetch, about 15 mile fetch, and that was a pretty rough ride. Alrighty, so this is not going to be anything that will excite anybody, but it started here and I went up the river under the bridge and hung her right, and this is where I'm at now. passed under the I-295 bridge, hung her right, and sailed into the anchorage. So, really, it all went pretty well. 
See, I put these markers on here to give me aiming points. And I came in and I sailed and pointed into the wind, which was more or less out of the south. And I dropped the hook, and now I'm getting set this way. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the engine and do full reverse and kind of help encourage the anchor to set in the mud. But I'm sure I'm fine. And, uh, and then I got to make sure I'm 200 miles from land. 200 feet, I'm sorry. And I, and I am. I think I'm far enough out. I'm sure one of the neighbors would call the cops if I was, if I'm not. <sighs> not a moment too soon. Got anchored. Put away all the things and tidied up all the stuff. Anchor beer. Cheers to everybody. Thanks for watching the channel. And at the moment, I'm going to rotate around. And you can probably see behind me, the weather is going to be a little bit foul. Again, that's the weather that's coming with the big frontal system that's going to bring all the snow up north and all that bad stuff. So I'm thankful that this is all we're going to get. In fact, I can, I can see the rain coming down now. I've got my buckets out to collect rain. I already took my shower. I'm cleaned up. So I'm going to stay here and drink a beer until it's time to go inside. Cheers, everybody.